Hi there, welcome to this new video of data science project and in this video I will show you how you can tune the hyperparameters of a time series forecasting project. So, so far you have seen that in my previous video I have shown you how you can create a time series project from a scratch, how you can you know transform and normalize data, how you can you know put a lag and create lag variables and all for further processing of the data for uh, within the time series and in this video uh, we will just continue our conversation about the time series and we will look at the hyperparameters so what are hyperparameters well in a nutshell if i uh, tell you so for that i'll just go above where i have rest pre my previous codes and for different projects so this was for uh over here if i go back I, i'm just searching for yeah over here we have arima model that we created so over here so if you look at the std underscore birth underscore train order equals to 212 so order 212 is the parameters that we had given in the in that video or in that project and the hyper parameters are nothing but uh, these param when we tune these parameters for different settings like for example instead of 212 let's say 110 101 111 or 211 212 all of that different settings we try to change in a runtime and try to identify whether the model is working fine or not with those parameters so this way we do an experimentation with uh, with a good combination of numbers on the entire uh, on the train and test data and then we figure it out whether the error is getting reduced in a particular type of setting or not and then based on where the error is minimum we go ahead and select the model so this way we basically try to identify uh, the best model uh, using the hyperparameter tuning and the best part of this this video will be that it's a complete automated procedure once you have written the code you will just pass on the new data set or the new information as part of the time series data set and it will start populating the information like i have mentioned in the previous video about how you can automate the time series process so you can see that and create a function which will automate your entire process all right so let's go ahead in the end and try to start the work and you will find the link of the data set as well as this worksheet into the uh, into the description so that you can go ahead and download or you can follow along here with me with any other data set that you have it all right so for the first thing is import pandas as pd import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt percentage i don't think i will going to plot anything because that's something which i have already shown you here i will focus solely on the hyperparameter tuning so for that i will import from the stats models stat models models dot tsa dot arima model underscore arima i guess i'm just trying to get the yeah arima underscore model all right import arima so yeah this one all right so once we do that we have the arima model and uh, we need from the for evaluation of the model we need the metric which is uh, scikit learns uh, mean squared error we'll just take that metric or we can basically uh, take a square root of that using the numpy which i have shown you in my previous video as well so from uh, scikit learn which is Scikit learn. Just see. Scikit. Just trying to get it auto corrected by the Python. That is skill learn. I was writing it correct. Just going ahead with the word I pronounce. So skill learn dot matrix import um 
mean squared error mean squared error all right so once we have done that what we need to do is uh, import the import the data set so we will continue use the using the birth data set that we have been using from the previous video and uh, this i have explained multiple times so i think we don't need to go it go again with this now the next thing is basically define the pdq values in a range so basically p underscore values and let's say range from one to eight this is what we want to change or from maybe let's say zero to eight if something you want to start with zero one one or one zero one or things like that p values d values we can say a range from zero to three i think that is more than sufficient and uh, that's basically with the experience you will get but yeah zero to three is more than fine q values equals to range maybe zero to five all right so we have implemented the ranges if you want to check p underscore values you will see that it is the range of these values after this we will start defining our main script that means we are directly jumping on the point over here uh, which which i want to show you so for that we need to iterate over the p values so i will say for p in p underscore values right after p i want to iterate the d value because the second parameter is d for d in d underscore values the third loop we need is for q values for q in q underscore values right so so far what we have done is just define the three iterators for one for p one for d and one for q so what we will take is we will go step by step of each value which is present here in the range provided to the order which arima model needs so that arima model can run multiple times without manual intervention or without manually specifying it and then we can get go ahead the or, or get the output of the mean squared error of each of the combination and this way from let's say 10 15 20 combination we will see in which case the mean squared error is coming low so the next thing is let's define the order which is p d and q right and once we have defined the order we will create train and test and for train and test we will take f underscore birth let's say 0 to 300 comma f underscore birth again birth uh, 360 T, sorry 300 to 365 all right so now we have the order values combination over here we have the train and test data set that we can pass it to our algorithm and as we will going to fit the algorithm and do the prediction we need to create one variable which is predictions of type list in which we can store our predictions that we will compare later with the test variable so we will see uh, the data set which is unseen to the model how it is doing it with the predictions that is in comparison with the test so once we have done the prediction we need to go through one more loop which will which will run to fit the model and cr and create the output for the mean squared error for i in range alien of test and then so before i move ahead while length of test is because for each of the test value that we have we want to have the similar number of predictions then only we can uh, we will be able to make the comparison which will so prediction will have the same number values as of test and the prediction will store the values from this for loop so that's why we are running with the same length of test all right so now let's go ahead and define our model so model equals to arima arima we have already specified it over here 
So within Arima, we need to pass the data set, which is nothing but the train and order is over here. So we'll just specify the order. After that, we will fit the model. So model underscore fit equals to model dot fit and displacement equals to zero. Interview question I showed you in the uh, very first video. If you have not watched that video, you need to go ahead and watch that to really understand it. And uh, once we have fit the model, we can do we can start doing the forecasting. So pred predicted y value model dot model underscore fit dot forecast and it's the first column which we need to pick. Now we can we have the prediction within this variable. So what we'll do is we will append the predictions. So it will have the similar number of values like the length, the test. So predictions dot pant prad underscore y. So whatever value it is keeping here, it will append it, keep on appending it over here. So we can keep on storing the value. Now let's go ahead and figure it out the error. So error equals to mean squared error and we have test comma predictions, right? So this way we will get our error. Now let's print our model. Print um, arima percentage as because it's the string comma um, MSE mean squared error equals 2.2 floating value percentage over here to print the um, to print the uh, error sorry first of all the model which is order because that's the order we will going to print order comma error right order will tell us for which order what is the error percentage so i think that's what we basically need and uh, the last time when i executed it and when i was testing this entire script it was it, it threw an error so i just wanted to show you in case if it uh, if it throws the error again then we we have to put the try and catch but for now just because you are learning very first time i have not put any try and uh, try catch or try accept but just wanted to show in case if any error is thrown, then how to handle that. And as well as um, what I observed is uh, it was taking a lot of time uh, to to give the output. So let's go ahead and execute this and see the error. So over here, cannot cast unfunction float 64 to type with casting rule, same kind. So it is coming over here pred dot for a cast why okay so first let me just start with try after this let's just do the proper indentation and over here try accept and we'll just say continue if we execute this just the warning which we can which is not a big issue as you can see it is still running but what we are not getting is the print statement so furthermore yeah so it's it's running is just that the print statement is not coming properly so let me just try to go to kernel and say restart. The restart will, we will just have to do this entire process once again. Execute this. Oh, kernel restarting. All right, kernel is ready. So let's go ahead and execute this. Execute this, this. We don't need to execute this, but for printer I think it is not picking up at as the the one which it needs to interpret because maybe I use the double quotation okay accept continue and let's go ahead and execute this 
still the similar error. Let me just quickly see where it is giving the problem. Yeah, as you can see, it is running. So I was getting this warning earlier as well. All right, so I just paused the video just to revise the model. When I say revise, I mean to revisit the model. And just one thing which I checked is, is uh, or one thing which I corrected is this percentage uh, over here. Earlier, it was over here, for example, not here, but here, because of which it was giving the printing error, but uh, it, the right way of putting it over here. So now you can see where I have just run the model and uh, Arima 001, 002, 003, 004 and their mean squared respective mean square value. So you can see for 012 the mean square value is really amazing 39 and uh, if you have seen my previous video uh, it was somewhere around uh, 49 or 50 or somewhere around that. So with this you can see that we have just seen how improved our result can be and I just saw 39.71 so all of these values are getting printed and as you can see that this is, this is pretty heavy script as it is taking a lot of time and over here it's, it is indicating that it is running. Similarly you can see over here that uh, something is going on in the back end for processing. And uh, one more thing which I just added because those warnings were looking really bad. Um, so what I did is uh, I just added this two lines which is import warnings and uh, warnings dot filter warnings. So with it, with this, uh, we are we are able to produce the output, and as you can see, it is running. And uh, last time when I checked, it was running for some eight ten minutes. Uh, as you can see, a new value is displayed over here. So all of these combinations will be tried, and uh, you can see that your you at the end of the day, you know, you are getting the good output. So while it is running, maybe you can have a coffee like I just did. <laughs> So that's about it uh, in this video about how you can automate this entire process and um, only this small mistake took a little bit of time just to figure it out what has happened but uh, but yeah apart from that everything is working fine and you can see that uh, uh, for different variation you are picking up the uh, model based on where the value is less for the mean squared error so 39.71 is the only one which i can see right now is the minimum value not only this you can also have something like some improvements like uh, uh, the output that you are getting over here you can put it in some sort of an uh, order or sort the values and uh, sort the values by error and this way you will get the first value uh, once it is once it is done let's say in the back end everything is done and you want to pick the minimum value which is like the minimum score as the best model just sort the values by error and you will get the best uh, best uh, output or the best model based on the orders that you have specified right now it is one 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 so there are a lot of other enhancements that you can do into this the more you will dig into it the more you will figure it out okay the next thing that you can do but this is just the code uh, to tell you how you will going to start with the uh, with any hyperparameter tuning related uh, activity in your project and almost every project has this so so this way you can you can go ahead and do the hyperparameter tuning so let me know how do you think about it and uh, i'll look forward to see your comments as well as if you find it useful go ahead and like it and share it with your colleagues and friends so that they will also become uh, the data scientists like you and you guys will have a great discussions on on these codes and problems so thank you thank you for watching this video